I brought this up just in passing with the kick returners last night, but let's talk, let's talk kicking game first. You know why? There's more situations than that that happen than in any offense. And we're covering all three today. Okay, number one, pregame checklist. Wherever you're coaching, even if you're in high school playing night games, your first three games or so, it isn't dark yet when you're playing, then it's dark by halftime. Yes? You want to first check the wind. You never check a flagpole because it's a lot higher or based on how your stadium's set, so it's different. Your special teams coach ought to be down there checking the wind exactly from being on the field, not from looking at a flag. Got me? So that's first. Second is the sun. Even if a kid has on eye glare, you would be amazed, and a lot of college teams make a mistake of this. The sun is right over there, and it's getting low, yes? And they're in the passing game. They keep throwing the out or the fade right in the sun. Even if when you wear eye black, you can't see the ball. You should be throwing it the other way. But it's all these things that we kind of think about, but we never what? Practice it, yes? So that's what you want to think about. Now, getting back to special teams, got to bring this up last night. If you're ever undefeated at any level, you've got to have a lot of luck. Two years of my career in high school when we were 14 and 0 in, in Division I, we won the coin toss every time. If we're out of town, we called it, we won it. If we were at home, they'd call it, they'd lose it. This happened twice. What happens is, Sun's not set yet because it's early in the season, yes. We always defer and we kick off, so the return man got to be looking right into that sun, yes. But things we think about, but we never drill it. If you've never physically gone through it, coaching high school, college, or pro guys, never get angry at a kid if they're not doing it correctly. You can't just talk about it. You got to physically drill the situations, yes. So this to me is big. You take a look at item number two, punt returners and kickoff returners. You'll love it. We have a shot chart. Now, your first game, you're not going to be able to have a shot chart on your opponent because you haven't played yet. But as you get going, you're going to have the shot chart. It's the best. Return men love security. If you coach in a high school or small college or JC, but what happens a lot, You'll play some punters that aren't kinetically very good in punting. So if you were the return man down there, say they're punting from, from, from their left hash, which is use your right hash, right? Well, when we got the shot chart on them of their games, because of his leg swing and his hips, even though he's kicking from that hash, our returner will be in the middle of the field because we know the ball's going over there because he isn't real good kinetically, you'll get to see all this on tape. But they love the shot chart. You'll see cutups later today where the returner very seldom has to move very far. They love that. Kickoff returns the same. Normally if they kick off from a hash, they're kicking to a corner. So our guys back deep adjust. One guy's in the middle, the other guy's about on the goal line. Yes, if they kick the other hash, they're there. If they're in the middle, they're both inside the high school hash a couple of yards. Yes. You always have a dominant return man with two guys deep. So whoever's going to field it, top of his lungs is yelling, me, me, me. Other guy's yelling, you, you, you. So it doesn't look like heckle and frigging jekyll, and they bang into each other. So we, they know who's dominant that comes right between them. Got me? But things that we think about, but we don't drill it. So when can we drill? The shot chart, and when can we drill the kickoff returners guys talking? Me, 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 you, you, you. Pre-practice. You want to do what colleges do. They all have pre-practice, but the kids haven't even stretched yet. So go through things nice and slow, yes? Right before practice even starts. It's awesome, man. All right? Don't worry about three. I covered that last night with guys. Punt returner alerts, huge. If you haven't done this, I know you can get it done. How do I know you can? You get, I've got to do this at every level. So you're talking playing in front of anywhere from 500 people to 85,000, yes. You get as far down the team box as you can on punt return. It only takes you a few times to practice it, 
right as you see the ball come off the punter's foot, it takes you about two seconds to figure it out if he's out kicking the coverage or if we have time to return it. I just start yelling, top my lungs, take it, take it, take it. We never went to returners looking at the cover team, got me? You're just focusing high eyes on the ball, that's it. So I'm yelling, take it, take it, take it. They're getting on top of them. I'm yelling, fair catch, fair catch. And the most undercoached thing, and the NFL guys at this is the worst, fair catch signal. That ain't it. It's over and back on your shoulder twice. Yes? Then he'll eye chin and tuck it, all those things we've talked about the last night. Now, the first guy can see a shank punts who? It's the punt returner, isn't it? How many guys are in there last night? So you got to hear it again. It's one of my things I can't stand, yes? Who thought up this term? Peter, Peter, Peter. Why don't you just yell, dick, dick, schlong, schlong. Why don't you yell what it is? Away, away. Great sideline involvement. You guys know they changed the high school rule. You can't do this anymore and then run and start pointing. But he will run at the shank punt. He'll sprint it five yards away and he'll keep yelling away, away. And he'll keep pointing with two fingers until the official blows the whistle. Because your guys blocking aren't conscious of him. So how do they know? Because since I'm yelling away, away, our whole sideline's yelling. We have great sideline involvement. I mean, it's loud. So wherever he's pointing, it's like the part of the Red Sea. So coach is coming down to block a guy because you're looking at his feet to block him so I can track him, yes? Suddenly, you're hearing away, away, and you see me pointing here, yes? Wherever you're at, you either run like hell that way or that way, but you don't run this way, yes? So the ball can't possibly hit you. But you want to get into the away, away call instead of Peter, Peter. I have never, you know, or poison or whatever, but yell what it is. What you're doing, basically, you're getting into buzzwords. Final thing before I turn on the tape, got to bring this to the guys last night, gamesmanship. You're going to get to see the cutout today. It's unbelievable. So I told you what I do for our return man, yes? Remember Pavlov's dog? You're going to screw him and not even kiss him first. No foreplay here. They never get it. And this isn't just high school kids. This is college returners and NFL returners. You guessed it. Our team's punt. And their returners down there. So I get as far down the box as I can get. Yes? <laughs> if I feel we're really covering it well, I'll yell at their return man. Take it, take it, take it. And you'll see them on, on the them. They start like freezing up because they don't get it. It's coming from the wrong sideline. Yes? And then we hit him, the ball pops out. If I think we're late, fair catch, fair catch, fair catch! You'll see the cut up in the CIF finals a couple years ago in Charger Stadium is that we have the kid so discombobulated that he runs up, he's unsure, and I'm yelling at him, and then sure enough, hits him in the chest, we fall on it, boom. I mean, what do you tell your guys you're down 49 to nothing in half, right? It was just one of those perfect nights. But it's all because of these things. All right? <clears throat> Next, let's talk our feet. I keep bringing up spiral notebooks. You know how you play some teams in your league every year? Home and away, home and away. Keep all in it, right? When you go away, you want to know how far it is time-wise from the locker room to the field. Exactly. Yes? Then our players, because all turfs are different, maybe they have grass instead of turf. Even if you play on all turf fields, they're all different. So all of our specialists, anybody has to operate in space, offense, defense, or kicking game, yes? They come out and just their pants and a shimmel, but they have their shoes on, they just check out the field to see their footwork, to see how it feels, because it's different. They know how it is at home, yes? Do you have that tape all set? You're going to go crazy here. We're going to start out on offense first. What this is, you're going to love it. In our coaching association, guys send me so much stuff. A couple of years ago, a guy sent me the College Officials Association's training tape. It's 100 clips of game situations and cut-ups, and then the officials either doing a good job of calling it or not. So I just knocked the sound off. My guy cut it up. 
So as we go through it, we're going to talk about these things a lot, yes? Now, before he snaps it on, where did that, here it is, right here. All this stuff will be available to you today from Dave. It's sitting up here on the table. We'll explain it later. You can take it back. It's all these things that are available to you in packets. Well, we're doing a quarterback school in a couple of weeks. There it is. Let me put it up here, can I? It'll just take it a second. Turn it on. I just saw this when I was going by the exhibitor place. There it is. Coaching quarterbacks. The last five years, I think quarterback play has gone in the tank. High school, college, and pros, you know, fundamentally. When you're operating in the pocket, you know you want to keep the ball in the top shelf. Yes, yeah, like you pull the hammer back on the pistol. You think it looks pretty. Any of your kids ever go to the Peyton Manning camp? It's the first thing he teaches them, because he never did it. You never divorce, if you're shuffling in the pocket, you never divorce the non-throwing hand. You think it looks nice and pretty, because now you've got to drive it back up to throw, and you're always late. Well, look at that. That's right off of a BSN Sports. That's what you don't want. See that hand? You never divorce the non-throwing hand early. Second, and some of your better quarterbacks do this. I love Tom Brady. I do but he's the shits. <laughs> Peyton Manning never did this. He always taps before he throws. He drops, he turns, he taps, he throws. You ever notice that? Well, if you know anything about spot dropping for linebackers, they're not staring at your eyes. You can't see your eyes in the game anyway. They stare at your shoulders. So if you're already in a drop, and you're looking here and here, so I turn here, I'm tapping, well, that's palm off. Because by looking at my shoulders, you can all see the palm of the non-throwing hand. So as soon as they see the palm off, they know you're throwing in the direction of your shoulders. Great backers, if you play any kind of spot drop zone, have to be able to break before the quarterback throws, not after. Yes, and that's when you get the ball picked a lot, yes? So those are some things you're going to see off the tape. Then we have some certain cutouts. You'll dig it. Part of this is entitled, Don't Be a Dick. So it's kids not doing good things in games, yes? And it's a great, this would be a great tape to ever show your kids. It's pretty cool. Okay, we're, we're going to turn that down to that, or is it good? Now, before we start, because I screwed this up last night. So now when I'm talking, no matter where you're sitting, you'll be able to hear me. Yes. Anybody here from Hawaii or Utah? Utah. God, you guys are everywhere. So you think it's dark enough? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Then I'm going to be asking you to pause it a lot. Okay, okay here we go. Situations, then we'll talk about them all. This was just cut up for you today. I'm going to use this at my effective coaching clinic. Plus and minus game responses. Pause it. Big man. Don't let your backs or receivers extend the ball on the goal line. Because if you play in high school, you've got to understand the re reality of the situation. You've got high school officials. Yes? So if he thinks his knee's not down and you extend the ball and he drops it and they fall on it, it's a test back. Never extend the ball. If you get that clo close to the goal line, you should have your pads out and your shoulders forward and get your ass in the end zone. Never extend the ball going in for a touchdown. Never extend the ball to get a first down. Got me? We coach not to beat ourselves. Okay, Sam, up front. No exceptions. Sam? Yes. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is See, now, a high school guy might have saw his knee down or not, because if he didn't, it's out. Yes? Because we coach not to beat ourselves, so we drill this all the time. Never extend the ball to the end zone. Now I'm just sharing with you what the better teams in the country do. It's up to you to decide if you think it's that important or not. You did a good job on the catches. We'll talk later about some other things and how you can use this certain type of ball, I'm going to show you, really help them. 
but there's some classic shots on here. We don't want to see that. Minus quarterback escape dimension and throw. Watch him. Watch him divorce and not throwing hands. He bails out. He's not aware of where he's on the field. He's out of bounds and he throws it. But how many drills you ever work with him having to flush into the boundary to be able to throw it on time, yes? Got me? Because if you don't drill it, it's going to happen. The things that happen to us on offense, defense, and kicking game that we just don't bring up enough and we don't drill it enough. These are all the situations. Here he goes. See, he's already out. He's lost sight of where he is on the field. What I'm saying, if he would have driven the ball up the top shelf on the run, he could have got it off before he stepped out of bounds. That's just funny. Go ahead and play. Oh, I probably didn't steal it because you can see the guy screwed up right here. Just watch the quarterback. That's grounding because he wasn't outside the tackle box. Yes. That's why you run pass under pressure a bunch once you kids have things down. We start doing less and less seven on seven and more and more pass under pressure, so it's more game like, yes. But he's got to be aware of where he is on the field. See it divorcing the hand, so now even when he flushes, he's not going to have time to ever throw it or get outside and throw it away. six minutes towards game speed, but they already have an idea. Yes, did that answer okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, quarterback under the center, great job here. Play action pocket pass. Watch him sell it. This is really good. Just watch the quarterback here. He's going to fake to that tailback, and he's going to pocket pass. See him show the ball. See him dip his head and his hips as he fakes. The back does all the faking. That allows your quarterback to already drive the ball up to throw it in the top shelf, yes? We're doing all this stuff at the quarterback school that we're doing March 24th and 25th. Great throw. Watch him again. Get away from the line. Show him the ball. There's three kinds of ball fakes. Here we're showing the ball. The back does all the faking. This allows him to drive it up on his last step to throw, yes? Because you're going to see just about every situation there is on here by the time we get down to this first day. Plus receiver, snake route. Pause it. This is huge, man. Number one, let's talk about the pass receivers. What a snake is to us, it's a number two receiver like a slaughter tight end, yes? Where he's faking flat and then he's turning it up deep, yes? How many of us has done this? I want to see an eye show of hands, too. So you've got him running on the snake route. You tell him to get his eyes up. Yes? That ain't good enough. So when he's turning up, your eyes go up and back because the trajectory of the ball is coming down. How many times have you ever seen a, a snake route or a fade route 
where the receiver just looks up, but not back, and the ball goes right past him. Yes? You guys went in here for the returner scuff last night, the dashes and the dots for the return man. If you coach in high school, you have to worry about the dashes and the dots. You're going to use the sideline and the, and the boundary. On the snake route, when he fakes flat and turns it up, we want him on the snake to stay halfway between the numbers and the sideline. Why? Where's the quarterback going to put the ball? It's going to put it over his outside shoulder. So he can fade into the boundary and catch it before it goes out of bounds. But if you were crowding the boundary, you're wide open on the snake, the time he catches it, the kid's out of bounds. Yes? So we do those in our individual receiver drills. We teach schematically. We teach what's going to happen based off the routes. Got me? Got me? Thing you really need to think about hard in terms of offense, I have never understood this. Right here's the ball. I don't care what kind of offense you're running. Right there's the ball. You're going that way. And a lot of high schools are really bad at this. So we're going that way. Is that right? Aren't we? I've never understood why you guys huddle in the North 40. You know, jog up there, you're playing those dinky 12 minute quarters, clock's running. Yes? You get to watch Mississippi State last year, you saw them do this because they bought into it. Where this all started was 1976 when the Cornhuskers, when Tom Osborne there bought into it. If you ever watch them play, number one, the huddle was one, two, and a half a step here. Quarterback faces this way. Yes, the defense can hear you, but they can't understand you because we ear hole our helmet and we mouth it. Yes? And go left. And go left. Right. We're friggin' on you, man. I mean, you can hear the other thing just breathing. Yes? Well, if we're on a roll, you want to get the calls in quick. If you're getting your ass kicked, just send it in or signal it in later. But we're huddling two and a half yards off the ball. It drives the defensive people crazy. Especially when you come out, you ask any good DC, what are some things they don't like? They don't like an balanced line, and they don't like end over, and they don't like option. So you need some of that in your system, yes? Yes? But if you've never tried that, it's really cool. Snap count. One of the most undercoached things in the history of man. We never hike the ball on the snap count. You guys aren't even old enough. His name was Bob Schlorett. I'm freezing my ass off as a kid in Missouri. God, I wish I was a betting man, like my dad. They're playing the Wisconsin Badgers. I mean, it's off the board. You can't even bet on it. Wisconsin's supposed to kill him. Bob Schlorett was 5'9", 190 pounds, the Washington Huskies quarterback. He's blind in one eye. Guy was an absolute stud. Well, they play them, and like all games, it starts out tight. Then the Huskies bang them on a punt turn for a touchdown. The dam breaks. They beat them like 44 to 18. Huskies crush them. Yes. The next year, they're playing the Golden Gophers in Minnesota. So in, in that game with the Huskies, open field, he snuck three times, averaged 35 yards of sneak. Yes, and I'll show you how you can get this all built in. Because when you teach the quarterback snake, that can be on a special circumstance. But when you usually do it, it's when? You've got to have it. Goal line or fourth and short in your own field. How much time do you spend on teaching the quarterback sneak? In terms of your own line really getting an elbow, breaking their stance, coming off and scrambling guys so you can hit it. But how much time do you actually spend on it? Yes. So then against the Gophers, he, he, he sneaks three times for like 38 yards. So this is back in 1959. In 1972, he's coaching the quarterbacks at the University of Washington. At that time, the Bruins, UCLA, still played in the Coliseum. Well, I was scouting for the Denver Broncos then, so they sent me to look at this punter. Could this guy punt? I'm in the top row of the LA Coliseum. In pregame, the ball's going higher than I am. I mean, the guy had a hang time like five something flat. I mean, he could punt, yes. Well, they didn't have the elevators in those days. So I'm coming back down to get a cup of coffee or something. There goes Bob Schlorett up into the press box. I'm in hot pursuit, yes. So I go, Coach Schlorett. He turns and I go, hey, if you have time after the game, can I just ask you about your snap count? He turns, yeah. So we talked about a half hour after the game. 
check it out. If you're under the center, you want to give your line a rolling start. Yes? Yes? Look at my hands. Down! Sight! We don't even pronounce the T of the set. The lineman, he quarterback pushes up. Down! Sight! He pushes up on the S of the set. Center hikes it. It's a little early. Linemen are leaving the hub of the hike. Yes, so it's not like set, hike. Down! Sight! Yes, that's if we're going on one. Third down and under five, we always go on two. Because the great thing in high school, the D-line steps in the neutral zone, it's offside. Even if they don't make contact. In college of the pros, if they come and they don't jump, they can get back. So we always go on two if we're under the center. Down! So hike! Hike! As soon as he sees them coming, he barks it again. They leave on the second hut of the hike, yes? But things you need to think about. If you're in the shotgun, it's the best. Wake Forest does this better than anybody. See if you can stay with me and figure it out, yes? When Tim Tebow played at Florida, yes? He's in the shotgun, yes? He would always clap, yes? Which was okay. But who are you not thinking about the size of the center? If he's shorter, it's kind of hard to see that clap, yes? Wake Forest has had it down forever. Are you ready? You ready? Now, anytime after the hands come up, again, this is up to you. Your better shotgun people, the center, the quarterback doesn't call the snap count, the center does. That's just something to think about someday. All right? But that's a great thing to do. So we have ways of going on too out of shotgun. Yes? Wake Forest? We're not hiking it. Then it goes back down again, comes back up, you snap. So you still go on tune shotgun. Mm -hmm. Did this make any sense? Yeah. It's huge. Before I get to it, take a serious note. I gotta cut up in case I don't get to show it to you later. We never run seven on seven anymore. Well, we do, but we don't. Got me? You all have them. Coach Neuheiser, when he's at UCLA a couple years back, I'm out there doing some stuff for them. I observe them in seven on seven. I bring this up to him. They freaking changed it the next day. This helps your offense and your defense. You guys will flip. You all have these extra kids, and the taller the better. They don't know how to. They don't know. How, they don't have to know how to pass block nothing. So we got all the eligibles up there, and we're running seven on seven. But we have a mock guard and tackle, normal splits, and the taller the better, and they stand straight, staring at the defense. Stand up. On offense. What it does, it forces your quarterback to instinctively come over the top because these guys are in his way. Did a study for five years, you'll love this. What's the most dropped pass route? High school, college, the pros. It's the crossing route, either short, intermediate, or deep. Why is that? Because you always run seven on seven. First name? Jack. Jack, my man. So there you go on the crossing route, right? Well, if you just run normal seven on seven, you can see the front tip coming right now. But suddenly when those guys are standing there, it's coming right by their ears, their head. That's why they can't catch it. Got me? So then when you want to move from hash to hash, the stand-ups just move and your huddle moves. But man, if you've never tried it, man, for defense, any zone, it's incredible. Because it forces your DBs and linebackers to truly use their zone eyes and what they're supposed to be focusing on because all these other guys are in their way. You got me? But if you've never tried it, a couple years ago, you know how a lot of you guys are in those passing tournaments? So Poway High School asked the opponents that when they had the ball or they, the other team, if we could furnish the stand-up guys and explain it, this team's out here from Texas. They're doing it in Southern California. These guys went nuts on this thing. So they all started doing it. But if you've never tried it, it's incredible. So you stand up the two guards and tackles? Yes, they stand straight with a normal split. Line. Yes, they but they, and the taller the better. Okay. It's the best, man. Okay, snap it on. But things you want to really think about hard. Simulation is the key. You want to make things as real as you can on offense, defense. There's a kid looking up and back on the up, yes? Yes? Up and back, not just back, up and back. 
just watch his head now. You adjust with your head and your eyes. You don't turn your head back the other way. Your head actually goes where the ball's going, yeah? So we do this in all of our drills. Look up and back. Shoot your hands late. See him? Late, not early. That slows you down. How many times you throw the deep ball and just off his fingers? Just like intercepting a pass. You shoot your hands late, not early. Here's a great shot of it again. Up and back, shoot the hands late. Then eye it, chin it, and tuck it. Pause it a minute. Let's talk eye it, chin it, and tuck it. We're into buzzwords. On all these handouts, if any you get, we're doing one clinic this spring, you flip, I think it's in May or in April, but it's nothing but effective coaching principles, period. Doesn't matter if you're a head coach, an assistant, if you coach OD special teams, it's all the same. We get you into buzzwords. We came up with a way, we get our point across to any player in two seconds or under, in practice and in games. Because the buzzwords are the fundamentals, you got me? The drills are the game. We don't drill anything that doesn't happen. Yes? Let's get back to the most frequently caught pass that he loves. Did you have a good time, Hope? Oh. Oh. Mine's Bill. Oh. Who? Oh. oh, my man, a normal name. Excuse me out. <laughs> You'll love it. What's the most completed pass? No interception danger. Receivers on a curl or a hitch. Sticks his foot ground, turns around. If he's any good, not many turns, he'll always noose his hands. Right there. See me? He looks right through the noose. Your quarterbacks learn if there's no interception danger, throw it right at the noose. If you come to the, the quarterback school in a couple of weeks, you'll hear me bring up the late Homer Smith a lot. A lot of you guys aren't even old enough to know who he was, one of the greatest offensive minds in college football that ever lived. And he was right. If he nooses it and the ball's coming, right in his eyes, the ball to the receiver has no speed relative to the receiver's eyes. That's why they don't drop it. That's exactly why they don't drop it. Now when they catch it, just like we covered on the tournament last night, I chin it and tuck it. So when I turn, I catch it, you always eye it, chin it, and tuck it before you do anything. Great visual discipline. Eye it, chin it, tuck it. Eye it, chin it, tuck it, yes? So it's what? I chin it, tuck it. That's huge. Now, big. If you'll take a look at this ball, and I'll pass it around. Actually, I'll show you guys. Do you see this ball? That's closed. That's open. It's closed. Yes. That's open. That's closed. That's closed. That's open. Yes. Well, pre-practice, what I'm talking about, go ahead and pass the ball around. Just look at it a minute. One top of the seams, it's a complete circle, so that's closed. Then on the other end, it's almost shut, but it's not, so that's open, yes. So in all of our catching drills, pre-practice, they just stand there, they noose it, and they call it open or closed as they eye, chin it, and tuck it, yes. We do the same thing with the return man. It's a punt, you always throw up a spiral, it's the hardest catch. If it's kickoff, we flip it in over end, yes? But as you pass that ball around so you can see it, th that's a great thing to use. Don't help them, you guys in there last night. Mm -hmm. Kickoff and punt returns. You never catch the ball above sternum height, yes? Well, and again, they have them on shoulder pads. Yes? Yes? So a mistake we make, we don't put them in these things, they end up in their hands like here. Well, we want it coming over your nose. Yes? Yes? Well, your hands, you're not going to catch it from here. You're going to be out past your shoulder pads. So by just now, if, if you own a boat, you know, you buy these at Walmart, obviously you're not going to put these on your boat except you give it to a guy that you can't stand, so if he falls overboard, he'll die. But boy, for your, <laughs> hey, for your return man, you can do some great stuff, man. Because when you see all these situations, the point I'm trying to bring up to you is not nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, 
it all gets back to how you taught the fundamentals to make them be able to respond to the situation. Okay, turn it on. Plus receiver, post catch, pause it, give the ball to the side judge. Hands up. Tell me how many of you guys are into tempo on offense? If you get nothing else out of today. But it's built in because you're going to drill it, yes? Backs and receivers. If you catch a short route, high school guys are both. A short route and you're tackled. He'll be coming at you on the run. You pop up, you hand the ball to the umpire. If you're on the sideline, you hand it to the side judge. So you can line the goal again, yes? Or if you're in a hurry, hurry mode, it's like swing a minute. But how many times do you actually drill it like that from day one, yes? Big, if you like to run, we call hurry, hurry. Hurry, hurry, we have a couple of categories. We've got hurry, hurry. We've got NASCAR and we've got juggler, because we're going for your juggler, yes, here in a second. On, on, could be pass or run. So on hurry, hurry, that means hurry up and line up, and then we're always going on the first count, offensive line's into two point, and we're throwing, yes, as an example, okay? Now, you guys will love it. NASCAR, you guys remember Les Miles? I love Les Miles. A couple years ago, because I'm a big Nick Saban fan. Pete Golding that's now the DC, I've got to do stuff for him back when he was at Delta State in Mississippi. You ever been to Mississippi? It ain't the other world, but I can see it from there. I mean, it's brutal. Anyway, Les Miles did this to Nick Saban's guys four times in two years. Because they're coached so well in terms of situations, yes. If, the, if Alabama gets you, watch it next year, they still do it. If Alabama, has got you third and five or six. They always go into nickel, and they always sub. Two guys come out, two go in. Well, Les Miles knew that, and they drilled it all the time. What's neat is you may have A play, this could be NASCAR, or you may have a couple, they keep changing it up at the quarters or halftime, yes? So the quarterback sees a guy stop, he just starts yelling NASCAR, NASCAR because they know what the NASCAR play is. We always go in the first sound. Alabama's got nine guys on the field or 12, but they never had 11, or they hit them for the touchdown. That's NASCAR. It's really cool. Yes? Yes? Yeah. It's really important. When you go for the juggler, what's the difference between NASCAR and juggler? Juggler, it's a route that we're definitely going downtown on the yes? So, when would you possibly call juggler? A, you've got to have a great guy in the press box. You've all been there. How many guys ever coached in the secondary? Your hands up. You will appreciate this. I've been blessed coaching every level, and I'm the same as you. There's a big difference between your starters and your backups, yes? Yes? Yes. So what's the worst thing you can do if you're in cover three, which in theory, you can't get BD, right? Your guy gets beat deep, but it's in the open field, so you yank him. In comes your backup. So LSU knows they're going juggler. So they're going downtown route on that new corner. Because he's not as good as the other guy, you just yanked. Yes? But things that you really need not just to think about, to actually practice. But this one is big. This is if you're a tempo team or what? You're in a hurry, hurry, and you're out of timeouts. Don't just flip the ball on the ground. Give it to the nearest official. But you drill that from day one. Got me? That's big, man. But it needs to talk. And nobody ever talks about this stuff. I don't think enough. Okay, snap it on. So check him out here. He's going to throw to his left. <coughs> Down he goes. And he's up. You can see him flip the ball right now on the side, Judge? Right now. Yes, now they weren't in a hurry there. But you can do it every time, yes? But again, we drill this as part of seven on seven, and we have mock officials out there, right, which are other coaches. Minus receiver, working the back end zone, the back end line. <coughs> again, he lost focus of where he is. You're now going <coughs> to receive him. You stepped out of bounds. Yes? Yes. This is Penn State. But isn't that amazing? 
So you want to sink your hips a good yard from the inline when you come, yes? Yes. But just great things to show your staff and your players, man. If you come to that effective coaching clinic, we're going through this and some other stuff in detail. Escape dementia by the quarterback. He wasn't even conscious of the chain. He crosses the line of scrimmage before he throws. <coughs> But you've got to use chains when you're going seven on seven or team every day. Because if you don't, these kind of things are going to happen. So this is a touchdown, it's called back, yes? Because if you look at things, what separates the good from the great at any level coaching? Attention to detail. And what's the other big key I gave you? I Simulation. See. You make it as real as you can all the time, yes? Good goal for injury players. Oh, yeah. Anybody, you've got enough guys to do this. Pause it. Huge. Take a serious note. You guys, you guys remember putting my football go? Somebody had it. I had it and I grabbed it. No, oh, right where I left. Got a hit on that. Right up there. Tell me I'm not alone because I'm old. Have you ever gone at your house? Have you ever gone into to a different room to pick up something? And the time you get in the room, you can't remember why you're there. Has that ever happened to you guys? God, yeah. unbelievable. So, if you remember Peyton Manning a couple years ago, how I knew this. A friend of mine is his personal trainer. So if this is on a Tuesday at 9 a.m. He finds out he's going to be able to play that year. Yes? At 9.30 that morning at a local high school field, he's got his trainer, a stopwatch, and his footballs. He does 200 five-step drops at game speed. Most undercoached thing with young quarterbacks that were covering at the quarterback school, they don't get it. They start slowing down in their drop to solve the coverage problem. No, you guys aren't even know, old enough to know who he was, but Joe Namath, before he blew out his knees at Alabama, had the fastest three, five, and seven step drop from every center that's ever been timed. And he learned the big secret, the faster you back and get set, that's when you solve the coverage problem, is where are those guys rise? I hit my back foot to tell me who I'm throwing to, yes? What Peyton Manning does, you have your quarterbacks, and once they learn any drop, they always do it at game speed. Yes? Yes? Yes. Don't, and I'm not here to offend you, but I love you. That's why people contract us, yes? This drives me crazy. We get into terms, and we overdo it. A lot of shotgun people, they have baseball and basketball, and I'm telling you, it's BS. There is no baseball or basketball. What's baseball? It's fast, yes. Basketball is more slowed down sometimes, yes. Well, that tells a quarterback to change the speed of his drop. Holy shit, man. If you slow down any drop, you're just giving the guys coming on the pass rush time to get your ass, yes. Yes. So we don't teach that. Anything we do, we pass drop at game speed. There is no basketball or baseball concepts. I mean, I don't know who ever thought that up. I mean, that might sound good on the board, but you haven't been playing much. A lot of guys do that from across the country. I'm talking some major college guys. Don't get caught in the trap. Yes, you want to drop at game speed. Simulation, simulation, simulation. Okay, snap it on. So here, because he, you hadn't used change, he's already crossed the line of scrimmage. Yes? Let's check out this agent. Holy Toledo. Now, could he have hit this on escape dimension or not? So he shovels up, that's fine. But watch him divorce the non throwing hand. So now you try to throw it, all you can do is push it. You can't whip it. You could have hit that. Plus receiver, scoop the low throw. Watch him eye, chin, and tuck it. Put your dorsal side of your palm on, palms on the ground and scoop it up to you. We want to catch the ball in the hands all the time, and then he'll scoop it to his chest. See that? Watch him eye, chin, and tuck it. Now what he should have done after his second roll, you either caught it or you trapped it, yes? You always talk the officials into it. So once you scoop it and roll, come up on your back, you hold the ball up to Sean McCarty. You'll talk him into it every time.
the dorsal side of the palm is showing an indicator, that's the back side of your palm. Watch the number, right number one receiver. Do not extend the ball to get a first down. Yes? We're never going to extend it. See there? But now, based on who your officials are, they might have called that a fumble. I mean, that's close, yes. But isn't it good kid to share this stuff? Because this is the game. But you've got to drill these things all the time and keep bringing it up. So we'll never extend the ball basically under any circumstance. Now, what you asked me, that's kind of a false set of pause. Take a serious note. If we're, if we're in the goal zone, goal zone means we're inside the other team's five yard line. Yes, the goal. We went six, not three here. If we're going to run a play to the edge, this was a Homer Smith team. Say we're going to run a toss sweep. Let's say we're running outside zone. Well, you guys are no outside zone, though. What are you looking for every time? It's the cutback. That's what you guess. But we tag it. So we call outside zone rim. That tells the running back, run to the edge. Run to the near pylon as hard as you can go inside the five, yes? That's the only time if you get to get hit, we'll let you extend it over the pylon. That is the only time. The rim means run to the edge, yes? That's a great term to use, boys, but you drill it. Okay, snap it on. Don't be doing that. What I did, you know how you go to a lot of things and keep asking for it, you know, gotta keep coming back, coming back. So I figured out, put it on there four times. So guys can really observe it and then really think about it instead of us pulling it back all the time. You want to start doing that in your own joint tips, see you guys. Okay, watch this wide receiver. Great job. He's gonna eye it, chin it, and tuck it. Just watch his eyes and his head and his chin. See it? All the way to the catch. He's thinking about open and close. Yes? That's a great job right there. Eye it, chin it, and tuck it. Always shoot the hands late. Always high point the ball if you're covered. What's your, what's your, um, say he's up in the air, right? What do you, what do you look for when he comes down? Based on his footwork or legs. No, he's, look, look he's, look, he's just looking at the ball. Mm -hmm. Don't even talk about his feet. Minus quarterback, operating a pocket under duress. Yes? You really see the uh, cutouts. Watch him divorce the non-throwing hand as he's trying to operate in the pocket. You're, what do great defenders tell in the pass rush? Ready to tackle the quarterback high. <coughs> you come over to pin you so you can't throw the ball's coming out. So if, you're, if your platform discipline's poor, that's what's going to happen a lot. Yes, a lot. That's why if you can get to the quarterback school, I would do it because we have ways, like pause it, if you will. I don't know if you guys know. I don't know. I don't know the guy that coached him. You saw last year. Josh Rosen is it? Because he never divorces his non throwing hand and he never taps. That kid that's now playing for the Chicago Bears that played in North Carolina. He never divorces a non throwing hand, he never taps. Give him some pointer someday, that guy's gonna be really good. But it's that important, man, because you don't want these things happening. You don't want the next thing out of your mouth to be blocked left, right, or middle of the field. Okay, snap on. He's always you want to step up. You don't want to step back and try to bow out because your protection is made to that way. That's a real inexperience for quarterbacks to do that a lot, especially in high school. We're covering all that stuff with the quarterback then. Plus, there was no eligible there. I think he just panicked. So this is ball illegally touched, kicked, or batted, which would be an automatic safety. Either way, they got it. Plus quarterback taking a sack. How much time do you spend on this? And you can do this without killing them. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There he is, I feel it coming. First thing he does, he protects the ball. That's why you never divorce a non-throwing hand. So you drive it back in your chest and pin your elbows, yes? Yep. Operating, this is a great job. 
we even get this taught in shorts. We don't hold hurt our guys. We have scouts coming out with a big shield that gets together and help you pop, so they just work doing it. Yes. If you guys have never played quarterback, there's all kinds of courage. Boy, you think it's you're back there trying to read and key all your reads and, and the world's hanging around you. It takes a special kind of cap. Quarterbacks beg you to pause it. Don't beg. Don't politic. Cover the pass when you throw or you will get lit. Mm -hmm. Yes? Receivers do this a lot too, especially in the NFL. Quit begging for calls. You're not going to get them. They're going to call if you don't call. Just smacks a poor coach in my opinion. Okay, quarterback, don't beg, don't politic. Cover the pass on your follow through or you're going to get lit. Because when they see an interception, somebody's peeling back on you, yes? Okay, snap it on. So here it goes. They're going to hold him. They're going to hold this slide book while I can bitch. So he's going crazy. So Alvin, you're going to see Alvin here start politicking and begging right now. See him? No, no, he's holding the eye out. Boom! Ring my bell. <laughs> don't politic, don't beg. Cover the throw or you're going to get lit, yes? That's why our quarterbacks, if, they, if you're in college or if you have enough guys that you can platoon in high school where he doesn't play defense, he always goes with the DBs during open field footwork to tackle drills. Just that stuff so he can tackle the interceptor. Yes? So here they hold him. The 25's got him locked up pretty good. There he is, politicking, begging. Yeah. But they can learn this right away, seven on seven. Illegal shift. Pause it. How we never have illegal shifts. Let me talk about how we'll break out first. Some of you guys aren't old enough. His name was Tom Landry. He used to coach the Dallas Cowboys. So back in the 70s and early 80s, I'm a head coach at the University of San Diego, and I would go to Cal Luton. That's yes. So I'd go, I would go up to the training camp with, with uh, California Luton. We'd spend a couple hours to stay there. You guys remember, and you guys are older, how they would come out and shift, and motion, do all this stuff. How can they be so crisp? <coughs> that was huddle breakout. Terry Donahue era at UCLA. When all, Homer Smith and Coach Newhouse and all these great coaches are there, they bought into it when I shared. They ran huddle breakout at the start of offensive practice. When a quarterback would call a formation, any center motion would have to call a play. That's all they did. They never huddled again in practice. Think all that time you said when you run the game and half line. They never huddled. They, that's when they practice a huddle. Huddle breakout, first five minutes before they go to the individual on offense. Isn't that fiction? That will eliminate what you're going to see here. If you shift, followed by motion, high school guys are throws. Once you shift, you've got to be set a full count before somebody else can go. Yes? And if you get at that huddle breakout thing I'm sharing with you, that will eliminate. Okay, snap it on. Illegal shift. See that? The back shift up the tight end, but the receiver is stepping back at the same time the ball's high. Yes. Great training tapes, yes. Mistake three football wins. Nine games out of ten aren't won. They're lost. Yes. And this is something that takes care of a lot of this stuff. Now watch the receiver at the top. He never gets set for the ball. See him kind of flinching around? So we're covering all these things during practice. We'll bring him in to show him cut up. Hopefully it's not of our guys, but of somebody's guys, yes. Who saw it? 
Pulled back, put his hand down, this guy's going in motion. He was late, yes. He wasn't crisp. Good job of protecting the ball. Again, watch the quarterback when he's getting hit. That's why you don't, you don't divorce a non-throwing hand, so then you can drive it into your chest and hold on to it as you're getting thrown. It's that receiver at the top again. Pause it. Let's talk defense a minute. If you notice, why did that receiver get screwed up? Because they had a bench call. Then he turned to the bench to get the signal, and then the quarterback, so that was on the quarterback. Whoever coaches your D-line, we always anticipate a quick count. Yes, we go on movement, not on sound. So I line up as they line up in my <coughs> stance. Suddenly, they're all up and they're looking at the bench. Yes? Take a knee. Don't sit there in your damn stance. Another eight, ten seconds, you're tightening up. Take a knee. And as soon as the offensive line turns around, get back in your what? Stance. We're covering all that stuff that affected coaching plan. But things, but they learned this in day one. Man. So we're always joking. Yes? Okay, snap it on. You having a good time at this thing, I hope, or not? Is this helpful to you? Yes, no. very much so. Because it's huge. It's tough enough to beat the people we're trying to play, so let's not beat ourselves, yes. We have met the enemy, he is us. He's got to go like When do you know you're in serious trouble? High school or college? You're playing your first game of the year on the road, and it's homecoming. Nobody has homecoming their first game. <laughs> you ever notice that? That's when you know that you're in trouble. Watch this receiver now. Who's moving? Slot. Coming out. Illegal shift, yes. Yes. What just happened on that last play of the quarterback? He's changing the protection. Well, he's talked to the old line. He should have turned around so the backs can see his voice and hear him because he's changing the protection. If you notice, he never turned around to them. So that's on the quarterback again, yes? Yes? That stuff is huge. Next. You'll see it later on a different tape of time for Mets. If you're under the center, <coughs> Wisconsin does this better than anybody. They've done it forever since the Barry Alvarez era. But if this is the center, yes, if we're under the center, we always come up, we put the dominant hand under first to the field on his butt, yes. If I'm not going to step out and audible or insert a blocker somewhere else, so I insert the down hand. Now, when I come up, I give him a nice shot on his hip, tap his hip. That tells me I'm coming under, I stand under. I'm coming under, I stand under. What that solves is this. We come up, we got the dominant hand under. Yes? But now I'm going to change it back to insert someplace else. The center knows I haven't tapped him. Yes? So he'll step back and call it, come back up. That bitch. That stuff is huge. Okay, snap it on. We're going to roll, get to all OD and kicking in two hours. But isn't it neat to bring things up or not? Because these are going to separate the difference, man, between you being good and great. False align, the left wide receiver and the right guard.
Pause it. The left wide receiver is a detached number one. He's not on the line, and the right guard's in an illegal set. He's vertically set too deep. Yes? So we're screwed up at left wide receiver, and we're screwed up at right guard. Yes? Okay, snap it on. Pause it, please. We're coming this way on defensive cutouts. You're going to love it. You can call far and near, but I don't like that. I'll cover it later. This will tie in a lot to if you come to that split vision thing tomorrow morning before Cubby Smart Talks. You see the defenders over there on the left, Sam? The defensive line. They can see that their right guard's a mile back, yes? Yes? If he's a mile back and he's in an up stance, those guys on the left are yelling blue, blue. He's going to pull or he's pass set. Yes? But the guys on the right, they're pretty balanced. They, don't, they just yell red, red. It could be run. We don't change what we're doing on defense, but that already gives them a pre-snap of what's going to happen. Sure enough, watch that guard pull. Yes? Okay, snap it on. Then the last thing before the break, who here has ever played offensive line and still be in the stands? Come here. Everybody turn around and look at him back here. Yes. Okay. 